In this video, we're going to look at blob assets in Unity Dots. We're going to learn what they are, how to create, and how to use them. This is what Unity uses internally to handle dots animation data, physics shape data, and more. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so blob assets are a very interesting feature of Unity Dots. First of all, if you're not familiar with Unity Dots, then check the links in the description. Blob assets are essentially containers of immutable data that can be accessed through a reference. So this is a way that you can store a reference to some data that you can then access from all of your entities. And because they are immutable, that means you can safely read from blob assets from multiple threads at the same time, which means it's insanely performant. This can be useful for any type of data that doesn't change in your game. So for example, animations, scriptable objects, fixed world settings, unit stats, pathfinding maps, and so on. You store whatever data you want in a blob asset and read from it concurrently from multiple jobs. The way you create and use blob assets is first you construct a blob asset, normally during the game object conversion system. You define all of the data that will go inside the blob asset and set it. When defining the data, you define the struct that holds your data. Then you have several containers for it. First, you have the blob array, which is a normal array holding several instances of your data. Then you have a blob pointer, which is a simple pointer to a single instance of your data. And then you have a blob string, which holds a simple string. With the blob asset constructed, then you have the blob asset reference, which is how you store the reference to your blob asset inside an entity component. And then you can access that blob asset from anywhere, like inside a job, read that data, and do whatever you want. In a future video, we're going to look at how we can use blob assets in making a custom dots animation system. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Okay, so let's look at an example to try it out. As I said, one key aspect of blob assets is how they are meant for immutable data, meaning data that doesn't change. So for a simple example, let's look at how we can define some positions in our world and have our entities follow them as waypoints. So first, let's make a script where we're going to define the blob asset data. So we create a new C -sharp script. Let's call this the waypoints blob asset. Now inside, let's first define a very simple struct. So a public struct and let's call it our waypoint. And inside, all we're going to have is a public float 3 for our position. And yep, that's it. It's that simple. So this type will represent a single waypoint. And we're going to have several waypoints in our blob asset. So now down here, let's define another public struct. Call this the waypoint blob asset. This will be the actual blob asset type. And inside, we want to have an array of waypoints. So for that, we use the type blob array. We're going to make an array of type waypoint. So we have our type waypoint blob asset, which holds an array of our waypoints, which themselves, each of them holds a float three for the position. So this is the very simple structure of our blob asset. Now it's actually constructed. So back in the editor, let's create a new C -sharp script. Call this the waypoint blob asset constructor. Okay, so now this one will be a game object conversion system. I covered the game object conversion system a bit in the dots prefabs video. Essentially, this system will run during the game object conversion. And the function that you need to implement is called on update, but it's really just going to run once during the conversion. Now in here, we can construct our blob asset. So the first thing we need is use a blob builder which takes an allocator, so let's make it temp. And now this object needs to be disposed. So one way we can do this is with a using code block. There you go, using our blob builder. And now to begin building our blob asset, the first thing we need is to use our blob builder in order to construct a root. And we pass in our blob asset type, which is our waypoint blob asset. This function returns a waypoint blob asset, so we store it. 
And now here there is one very, very, very important thing, which is you must use the ref keyword, both on the function and on the declaration of the variable itself. If you forget to add the refs, then essentially you'll be working with a copy, which is not what we want. So always make sure to remember to add your refs. So here we have our waypoint blob asset. And inside our blob asset, we have our blob array. This will be a fixed length array, so we need to allocate some memory for it. And the way we do that is we use the blob builder in order to use allocate. Then we pass in the reference to our array. So we pass in a ref to the waypoint blob asset and we use our waypoint array. And then the length of our array. So in this case, just for a very simplified example, let's just add three waypoints. Now this, as you can see, returns a blob builder array. Now using this array, we can fill it up with our data. So all we do is really just access it on the index. So just for testing, let's make our three waypoints. Okay, so here we have a simple example of a waypoint triangle. Now here we're adding our waypoints directly through code, but it's only to keep this example simple. In a more real use case, you would create a custom authoring component and set up your data like you do with components in the game object conversion system. I will show an example of that later in the video. So with this, we have set up our blob asset. We constructed our root, we allocated space for our array, and we filled it up the array with our data. So with all of that set up, then we take our blob builder and actually create the final blob asset reference. So we use the blob builder in order to create the blob asset reference and we pass in our allocator and make it persistent. All right, so here we have our reference. Now here, let's test out this code to make sure the blob asset reference was created correctly. So we just do a debug log. Let's go into the waypoint blob asset reference. Then we access the value that will give us the waypoint blob asset. And then let's access the waypoint array and do a log on the length. So if everything's correct, the console should say three. And yep, there's our console indeed saying three. Now let's test printing the waypoint array and let's access the position one and print out the position. And yep, there's our log with our waypoint position. So we have our blob asset correctly being constructed and turned into a reference. Awesome. So you can see how it's actually quite simple to create a blob asset. You use a blob builder in order to build it. You start off by constructing the root. Then you set up all your data. So in this case, we have a blob array. So we allocate memory for that array. Then we fill up that array with our data. And then finally, we construct our blob asset reference that we can then use. So now that we have this, let's see how we can actually use our blob asset reference. We want our entity to follow the waypoints. So back in the editor, let's make another script. Let's call this our waypoint follow. Now inside, this is going to be a normal component data. So we have our basic component. And now for the fields, we're going to have a blob asset reference. And we pass in our waypoint blob asset type. And then let's also have an int for our waypoint index to follow. So we're going to move our entity towards the waypoint on this index. Then when we get there, we increment the index to go to the next one and so on and so on. And now we actually need to set this field on our entity. So for that, we have plenty of methods. We could, for example, in here, construct an entity and create a component to hold our waypoint asset reference. Then we would have our moving entities actually grab it from that component. That would be a good approach if we were going to have more entities being spawned. But in this case here, we're just testing with a single entity that is already converted on start. So we can simply set it directly in here. After we construct our blob asset reference, let's first store the reference out here. So outside of our using statement, we get that and we assign it in here. Okay. And now afterwards, let's set that component on our entity. So here in the editor, I have my player object. As you can see, very simple, just has a convert to entity script, a basic mesh with a material, and then it has the tag player. 
The player tag is in here, as you can see, just an empty tag component. So this is how we can identify the player. So here, after we have constructed our blob asset reference, let's get the player entity. And now while researching, this part really tripped me up. Inside of the game object conversion system, you have two entity managers. You have the normal entity manager, except this one refers to the entity manager inside of the entity conversion world. Whereas in this case, we want to access the entity, which by now has already been converted. So there's another entity manager in the game object conversion system, which is the destination entity manager. So this really tripped me up because I was looking for the player on the normal entity manager, except the player had already been converted, so he did not exist inside of that world. So when working with the game object conversion system, keep in mind that you have access to two different entity managers. All right, so using this one, we can now locate our player. So we create an entity query, pass in the type of our tag player. So we have our player entity query, then we grab the player entity by going into the player entity query. And since we only have one, then we can use the get singleton entity. Okay, so just like this, we have our player entity. And now we can just set our waypoint follow component. So again, using the destination entity manager, we call our set component data. We call our add component data onto the player entity and we pass in the waypoint follow component. Now here we can pass in the waypoint blob asset reference as the one that we created up here. And yep, just like that. So up here we construct the waypoint blob asset reference and then we set that reference inside of a component that is held by the entity player. Now finally, we just need to do one last thing to make sure that this actually works which is since we're setting the component directly on the player entity, we need to make sure that the player gets converted before this system runs. So in order to do that, we can set this system to run after the normal conversion group. So we go up here and add the attribute update in group and pass in the type of and the game object after conversion group. So this will make sure that this system only runs after the game object conversion. Again, this is just one possible approach. We could also have the blob asset reference be created before the player entity and have the player itself go look for the blob assets in order to set the component. All right, so now over here, we have our blob asset reference and it's reference inside a component that is held by the player entity. So now we can make a system that will read through the blob asset and actually move our player entity. So back in the editor, let's create a new script call this the waypoint follow system. Now in here, this will be a very basic follow system. So here on our system, we just do an entities, do a for each. And we're going to make the for each only run on entities with our tag player component. Then in our for each, let's make sure that we grab the waypoint follow component. And now in here, we have access to the blob asset reference. So we go into the waypoint follow component in order to get the blob asset reference and get the value. So with this, we have our blob asset. And now we can access the blob asset. We're going to access the waypoint array then access it on the waypoint follow index. And then we get the position. And just like this, we have a flow three for our waypoint position. And yep, there it is, very simple. So now we just do some basic movement code in order to move towards this position. Alright, there it is. So first we calculate the direction towards our waypoint. Then we move towards that direction. Afterwards, we test the distance between the current position and the waypoint position. If it's close enough, then we have reached our waypoint. So we simply increase the waypoint index and do a remainder of the length of the array so it keeps looping over and over. Alright, now we can finally test and run our code. And yep, there's the entity moving from waypoint to waypoint. Awesome!
So you can see that it's going to position 0, 0, then over here 5, 0, and 2.5, 2.5. So there you go, constantly going over and over. So what we have here are all of the waypoints set up in a blob asset, then the entity is accessing that blob asset and following the various waypoints. The main benefit is you can have whatever that you want inside of blob assets, and since they are immutable, you can access them from multiple threads without any safety issues. This is how, for example, you would have animation data inside of a blob asset and multiple entities reading from it in order to update their animations. Now let's look at a more complete example. Okay, here I have another scene with a bunch more things. As you can see, there's a bunch of entities being spawned and they're all following the various waypoints. So here we're not directly setting the blob asset reference on just a single entity. Each one is grabbing its own reference. The reference to the blob asset is stored in a simple static field, which again is another method you can use. So when they get spawned, they grab the blob asset and then they go through their logic. Here I also made the blob asset using a custom authoring component and the conversion workflow. So here in my scene, you can see that I have my waypoint blob asset, then I have three game objects to use as our positions. So there's the blob asset authoring component, which contains an array of transforms, and then just have a bunch of gizmos in order to easily move around. So let's say move it in there and there. Here is the authoring component. Essentially what matters is that we have a public array of our transforms and then we declare our reference prefabs. Over here is the conversion system. As you can see, it's the same thing we were doing previously. We construct our root, then we use a get entity query in order to grab our asset authoring component. Then we allocate our space for our array and we simply fill it up with our positions. Then over here, I also have an example for how you'd use the blob pointer as well as the blob string. One thing about the string though is apparently you cannot use it inside a using statement. So in order to allocate the string, you would have to take this out and you would have to manually create the blob builder and then dispose of it in the end. So just a weird quirk, you cannot use it in a using block, but it works exactly the same. Then the entity spawner system is in here. It just counts a simple countdown timer. It instantiates an entity prefab, which I covered in a previous video, so check it out if you want to learn more about this. And then we simply add the component data, and in here we're passing in the blob asset reference by using a static field in our constructor. So here is the constructor with a static field. So again, different method. Then as you can see, they follow the waypoint positions. And since I'm using this nice authoring component, I could, for example, add a bunch more. So just make a new game object in here, add it onto my simple list, and then just position this object, and let's say put it in there. And now if we run, and yep, they go, they go into that position, and now into that one, and now into our new waypoint position. So there you go, now we have four positions. So here it is, a nice working demo showcasing how blob assets work. Blob assets are what Unity uses internally in order to handle physics shape collision data, their dots animation data, curves, and so on. Essentially, any type of immutable data that you have, you can store in a blob asset in order to access it super fast from multiple threads without any safety issues. Stay tuned for an upcoming video where I will be using blob assets in order to make a custom animation system very much like the one I use in normal game objects. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.